Hello everybody, this is Brian Garvin, and today we're gonna to talk about borrowing against your Bitcoin. Should you or shouldn't you? And I'm gonna go over all that right now. Um, it's a very hot topic on the internet right now. People are wondering, you know, who's gonna loan them money for their Bitcoin? How can they get paid interest on it and that sort of thing. I'm gonna tell you right now, before we even get started in this video, that this is a terrible time to do that. And I'm gonna go over the reasons why. There's actually a, you know, real reasons why you shouldn't do that right now, a few of them. And I'm gonna go over all those right now because I wanna lock you on and keep you on game. Um, right now, it, I'm, I'm shooting this video from Oceanside, California. It's 63 degrees out and it's a beautiful day. So let's get started. Um, Bitcoin investors in the last cycle did a lot of this. They, they signed up for exchanges like BlockFi Celsius and FTX and they got burned. They basically loaned out their Bitcoin and BlockFi is in the process of bankruptcy right now. I personally um, had 2.2 ETH in there, Ethereum, and I only got about maybe 20% of my money back after the um, bankruptcy. Actually, part of it was my fault because I didn't jump in on the bankruptcy soon enough and enter my information and all that. I kind of missed the first one, so there was a second one and I got a lot less. But that was partially my fault, but the point is they filed bankruptcy and uh, Celsius had some problems and uh, FTX, you know about FTX with Sam, Sam Bankman fried He's doing prison time because he screwed thousands of investors, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of investors. Um, there's a whole story on that and that's a whole separate issue. But, you know, one of the things I learned, I lost about three grand in that deal with BlockFi, and I realized after that that I'm never gonna loan my money for Bitcoin again unless they're a legitimate financial institution. I'm gonna go over this soon, so bear with me here. Um, there's, there's a couple options that you have when it comes to loaning out your Bitcoin, and um, hopefully this video will teach you a little bit more on how to be a technician out there and, and more of a smooth operator when it comes to doing this type of thing. Um, it's really not hard to do, but you got to know a few things, and that's what I'm going to go over now. Um, the option one is you can put your uh, Bitcoin on another blockchain, and if you're dealing with a small investor company, it's usually called a shit chain. Uh, and there's a reason for that, because none of them have succeeded in the long run uh, for paying you interest on your Bitcoin or whatever, because they're, they're semi-big institutions, but they're not anywhere near the size of the institution that you really want to trust with your money. Um, there you could anyway. What I so okay, this is a bad idea because you're you're using a bad chain to protect your precious Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin is something you have to fight for your life for. You have to keep it ultra secure on Coinbase or, or in self custody, however you want to do it. Um, but you never want to trust a third party with your Bitcoin to pay, you know, that, that say they're going to pay you interest or anything like that because you're taking a huge risk. Um, you, you, don't, you know, you don't want to become on the losing side of this game like I did with the, with a little bit of Ethereum. I didn't lose, you know, anywhere near all my money or anything, but it was just a bad thing that I did. And I'm glad I didn't do it with my Bitcoin or I really got what I got screwed. Um, and I was going to do it too. I was going to get greedy and say, well, I can earn interest on my full Bitcoin that I had back in, that I bought back in 2014. And I'm glad I didn't do it. Um, so option number two is there services out there that you can share custody of your Bitcoin and will offer you a cash loan against your Bitcoin. Um, there's different companies popping up right now that are offering these services. Um, but right now, like I said before, it's not a good time to do this because you don't, these companies are fly-by-nights. They're not anywhere near the size of a company you can really trust to underwrite your loan. Um, so the re there's two reasons for this, okay? The one is you have to know who's underwriting and guaranteeing this loan. If it's not a bank of, I mean, if you want to go in, you know, to Bank of America or Chase or, or any of these other companies, Navy Federal or whatever, and you want to borrow money at three or five percent, that's legit because they're they're a big bank and, and they're going to agree to the terms when you pay them back. Um, you know, basically, they'll give you money. You go buy Bitcoin. And as the Bitcoin appreciates, you pay them back what they owe you. And some of those loans are on a, what, five, seven year basis. That's fine. You're not paying what Michael Saylor pays. He gets the Fed rate when he buys Bitcoin. He he buys 625 million at a time that he just bought. In, and then he goes out and buys 9,300 Bitcoin and he pays less than 1%. You won't get that rate. I won't get that rate. Our rates will probably be maybe five to 7%, maybe even a little higher. 
Um, so that's legitimate. That's a legitimate, you know, deal because you know you're not you're not going to get totally screwed that way. Um, but don't go to the, any of these internet companies that depend on YouTube influencers and um, you know because they're they're just not they're they're just not going to work out. They never have. Um, so what I wanted to tell you is most of these Bitcoin lending companies they they, they come and go. I, like I mentioned. Um, the companies you want to work with, and they're not doing this right now, but but it, but they, it's really easy for them to set up their systems and processes. Companies like BlackRock, Fidelity, Ark Investments, maybe Charles Schwab if they decide to get involved, maybe Vanguard if they renew their faith in Bitcoin. Um, two or three years, four years down the road, they will offer these services. It's just a matter of giving, but, but these services won't make a move until the government completely approves them. Um, so they're much more legitimate and you could depend on a company like that because they've got the capital to back up everything and everything's guaranteed. Um, so if you want to loan your Bitcoin out to them, they'll be happy to, to loan it to you. I don't know what the percentages will be, but but at least you know you're not going to get screwed. So that's what I would say is, and the other reason you want to wait and not do it right now, because we're, I'm, this is a March of 2024 as I'm making this video, around 2027, then you could probably start loaning out your Bitcoin. But in the meantime, I would buy what you can, hodl it, means hold on for dear life, and let it appreciate for three years. Because <laughs> would you rather loan, you know, would you rather get a loan for, you know, three to 500 grand or, or 50 grand? You know, like right now it would be 50 grand. If it goes up 10X in three years, you can get a loan for four or $500,000. Then put it back in Bitcoin, pay them back if it keeps appreciating. Um, or, or, and, and, and you might, know, my, my other advice when getting a loan is don't be too greedy. Don't get the max of what they'll allow you to get. Just, just get a small portion of it and put it back for a little bump in your portfolio. Um, that's what I would do. Um, so you have those options, but don't work with a f small fly by night company, um, because they're, they're, they want you, they're venture capitalists and they work with YouTube influencers and they try to get all the internet people that they can to get in on their, their, you know, interest deals and, you know, little cash loan, short-term cash loans, and and if 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 they go, the chances are when these guys with BlackRock is going to eat their lunch in a few years, and when they do, they're going to close up, and they're not going to close up under the pretenses of giving you all your your money back or or, or all your Bitcoin back, and um, they're more than likely going to file bankruptcy, and if they do, you might or might not get anything back. Sometimes banks, are, I'm sorry, when they go into bankruptcy, they use some kind of restructuring service where they'll give you back some of your money, but that doesn't always work out that way. Um, so you got to be very careful because Bitcoin is your financial future in your life if you jump in right now. I just watched a video this morning from another influencer that was just very clear about the fact that we are extremely early right now. We're talking as of March of 2024. Um, everybody thinks we're late because they didn't get it 10 years ago. You know, I mean, I was very lucky to get one, uh, get up one Bitcoin in 20, uh, early 2018, but not everybody was that lucky. And so what? Michael Saylor didn't start buying Bitcoin until, uh, you know, like mid 2020 almost. And that was like uh, two years after I started buying it. But, but he, but his mind was so focused. He had money to, he had a lot of money to start with about 500 million, I think. And then he kept DCAing in there every time he can get his hands on some more cash or get another loan for Bitcoin, he bought more Bitcoin. He's a Bitcoin maximalist. So that should give you an idea how strong people feel about this industry and where it's going. Um, so many, There's so many factors that are gonna influence this industry. Let me give you a few of them just off the top of my head. I might not get all of them right, but you're gonna have options coming up soon. You've got ETFs right now that are allocating one to 3%. In the future, those same companies that offer ETFs are gonna allocate four or five and even 10%. So you got them, you've got governments that aren't involved. There's only a few governments involved right now. Um, there's what, 150 governments in this world that can get involved in the future that haven't even really looked at it closely yet. Government adoption is gonna be slow. When I say slow over the next three to five years, but many more will jump in once once it reaches a certain threshold, then a lot more will jump in. That's going to be just crazy good for the coup. It's also going to, you know, it's also going to open, open, educate people about Bitcoin to people of that country if they're adopting it because they're all going to know about it and start doing it personally as well as the government. So you've got retail whales. You've got so many people out there. There's 40 million millionaires, I think, in this world. And out of those 40 million millionaires, many more retail whales are going to be going out and you know buying bitcoin um and and a lot of these people are um 
you, you know, they, 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 they probably have a million or more to invest, some of them. Um, some of them have hundreds of thousands, but you're gonna get so many people uh, FOMOing into this once we get Bitcoin, say over 100,000. You're gonna start seeing just mass amounts of money coming from, from on the retail side. The retail side is people like you and me, basically, just regular people. They don't have to own a business. Um, you're gonna get big businesses that are gonna incorporate that into their trust fund. Um, you've got people losing faith in fiat currency, so they're gonna, they're gonna be transferring some of their money from their bank into crypto. So you've got all these factors, and you got the halving that's coming up every four years. You've got the one right now. Right now, the demand supply ratio is there's like a 14 you know, dollar demand for every dollar of supply or something like that. It's like 14 times. And what do you think is going to happen after the next cycle in 2028 in April? There's going to be, it's going to go down to like 225 or something like that. Because right now, in April, it's going to, right now it's 900. In April, it's going to be 450. And in 2028, it's going to be 225. So you've got all this, this crazy, you know, supply shock that's going to happen in the next four, four to eight years. Um, especially, it's going to start in April. So, so I can't emphasize enough that you should get all the Bitcoin right now that you can comfortably afford. I, I, I'm not telling you to pay your rent money and your food money for, for Bitcoin, no. And I'm not telling you to, you know, gaff off a car repair or something like that. You're, take care of your essentials, make sure you're comfortable. But then anything above that, that you can afford, I would go into Bitcoin because what's gonna happen the next, I would say, if you're looking at this long term like you should, eight to 12 years, it's just, it's gonna go completely parabolic because it's gonna be so much stuff happening that people don't even see right now. I didn't even tell you about derivatives. Derivatives are ancillary to e, uh, ETFs and they're gonna they're gonna eventually be part of the part of the deal. And it, derivatives are a 1.2 quadrillion dollar industry. A quadrillion is a thousand trillion. So keep your head up, get Bitcoin, hold it for a long, long time and you're gonna have a great return over the years. That's, and let me see what else I have to say. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanna tell you about these companies that charge interest is they're charging uh, 12 to 14% uh, for, for on these loans, which are way too high. If you're gonna get a loan, get it from a legitimate bank, you know, if, if they'll work with you on, on getting it for Bitcoin. I don't think they will, but if you can get a loan that way, fine, go for it. Um, the best thing you could do is wait three years for these bigger companies to offer you money and then you'll get what you want. Um, so I guess I'm, I'm just trying to see if I miss anything. Yeah. One thing I want to say is the American capital market is the best in the world. Hold on to your Bitcoin. Let it appreciate. Become a somebody. I mean, come someone with some net worth. Even if you own 0.1 Bitcoin, okay, when it reaches a million dollars, that's a hundred grand. And to buy 1.1 Bitcoin right now is like $6,000. So, and this is doable over the next, say, six to eight years. And the average American is $101,000 in debt. That's every man, woman, and child. Wouldn't you like to pay your bills off um, six to eight years down the road and just be completely stress-free? Uh, excuse me, stress-free. Um, so that's, that's my, uh, that's basically all I have to say in this video. I just wanted you to get up on game on, on borrowing your Bitcoin. Be smart and make sure you don't get burned in the process. That's that's my only takeaway from this video. In the next video, um, I'm gonna talk about some artificial intelligence 2.0 stocks that I'm invested in. Um, this is life-changing advice. So please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit, click the bell button so you'll get future notifications of all my future videos coming out. And we're gonna um, talk about these um, these artificial intelligence stocks I'm at. And if you can allocate a little bit of money to those, um, Remember, it doesn't benefit me financially. I'm just putting you on game and, and trying to help you increase your net worth. I mean, I don't get paid anything for that. All. My best pay is for you being a loyal subscriber. That's all. That would If, I, if you could just do that for me, that'd be great. Um, so that's the thing. I'm going to go into three different stocks. I'm not going to put them all out on the same video. I'm going to do it one per time because each stock has, I have to talk about it a little bit, you know, talk about why it's so good. Um, and all my stocks uh, are up right now. Even during this little dip that we're having right now, they're up at least, say, 20%. When we're in a bull, they'll be at least 30%. And that's just oh, having them for about 10 weeks. So that's about all I have to say for this video. Um, I want you to have an incredible day. And um, like I promise, I will be in touch. Thank you.